So this is not a straightforward story of a chef named Louis who invents the dish and puts it on his menu. That would be nice if we had that, but that's not what we have. But I'm going to explain what I think happened. One of the city's beloved French restaurants before the earthquake is named Frank's Rotisserie. So um, the star chef there at Frank's Rotisserie, you can see the bottom restaurant there is named Frank's Rotisserie. And it, in tiny letters, I don't know if you can read, it says Louis Coutard. Louis Coutard was the star chef at Frank's restaurant, Frank's Rotisserie. And apparently, he came up with the particular flavors in the sauce, the combination of spicy and creamy that makes it delicious. But the earthquake comes in 1906, and it wipes out Frank's rotisserie. It wipes out, wipes out basically all the restaurants in downtown San Francisco. Berger's restaurant wiped out. The old Poodle Dog wiped out. The new Poodle Dog, which is also a different restaurant, wiped out. There were many Poodle Dog restaurants at the same time as each other. It's confusing. Um, but three of these restaurants decided to work together after the earthquake. They would rebuild faster, and they would be able to share each other's customers if they um, joined forces. As you can tell, they picked the name Berger's Frank's Old Poodle Dog Company, Inc., which sounds like a committee of very strong-willed Frenchmen put it together. <laughs> but uh, that, so in 1908, it took them a couple years to actually put the new restaurant together. And in 1908, it opens. Unfortunately, a couple of months before the restaurant opens, the famous chef Louis Coutard died. But he was one of the draws for this great new restaurant. They did not want to let, they put him on the menu, even though he was dead at this point. They did not want to let the, his reputation just go. They wanted to cash in on it. Cash in is harsh, but they wanted, they, he was part of their plan. So um, its menu, the very first menu, this is the summer of, of 1908. It lists crab leg a la Louis, special, under crab there, the fifth one down, I think. And presumably, though we have no record of the meeting where they discuss this, but presumably that is named for their friend and colleague, Louis Coutard. It stayed on the menu there, and a taste for crab Louis spread all over the city with variations in different restaurants. The first recipe that we have, because this is a listing on a menu rather than a recipe, the first recipe is from 1908, I mean, I'm sorry, 1910. Victor Hertzler, who is the head chef at the St. Francis, he um, put out a great big cookbook of all his dishes. And one of them, one of his recipes in there is crab a la Louise. So he puts an E on the end. And he uses sweet Spanish pimentos instead of a spicy sauce. So I think that's why he makes it a more feminine dish. Um, not quite as much kick. Clarence Edwards, who uh, wrote Bohemian San Francisco, a fantastic book that the library, I'm sure, has, um, he published a recipe in 1914 that is for crab louis, and it combines a third mayonnaise with two-thirds chili sauce and a little relish, a little Worcestershire sauce, tarragon, shallots, and sweet parsley. In 1915, the Panama Pacific Exposition happens, and there's a cookbook associated with the exposition. In that cookbook, they, they substitute ketchup instead of the chili sauce, which is obviously making this dish a little more accessible for the tourists that they were hoping would come into San Francisco for this grand exposition. The exposition is a moment for San Francisco to say, we're open, tourists, please come back. And hopefully, our city is going to have a commemoration in 2015 of the 1915 Panama Pacific Exposition, because it was a really big deal back then. And many of the, the buildings, um, some of the buildings, remain from the, from the exposition. <laughs> 